Hello everyone and welcome to this week's book review. It is Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, Book 2, The Hammer of Thor by Rick Riordan. Rick Riordan. This book is 459 pages long. It was released on October 4th, 2016. And it is the second installment of the Magnus Chase trilogy. The first book was Sword of Summer. Now it's the, uh, the Hammer of Thor. So it turns out in the Sword of Summer that Surt was not the true antagonist. He was just a puppet and the strings were, were being pulled by Loki, as usual. Um, and in this book, the hammer, Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, Mjolnir, is, uh, is missing and Thor <laughs> essentially doesn't want to, he doesn't want it to go public that the hammer's missing because that would give his enemies hope that they could be defeated because the, the hammer's a symbol that it's, instills fear in his enemies. So he s discreetly uh, asks Magnus to, to find it for him. But really, that's just a huge uh what's the what's the what am i trying to say that's really all part of loki's plan it's almost like a decoy and that's all i'm gonna say on that because i don't want to spoil the whole story but he gathers his friends again samira the valkyrie uh hearth hearthstone the elf uh who's also their their token mage uh blitzen the dwarf who was also um master crafting blacksmith etc and then uh, added to their group is a new character named Alex Fierro. So that what makes this interesting is Rick Riordan, I feel, tries to be really inclusive with his character dynamics. And like, for example, Hearthstone's death, and I already talked about that in the first, uh, when I reviewed the first book, and that was really good because he was just deaf and they, like, it wasn't like they made a thing out of it. They, he's shunned by his family uh, Hearthstone because of it, um, but his friends are accepting of it, and it just highlights the, you know, the difficulty somebody with some some form of something different or a disability or whatever has. So then at, along comes Alex Fierro, who, if I'm not mistaken, is biologically born male, and uh, ends up being not ends up being, is a gender fluid person, which according to him, her, I'm going to say her because more, the majority of the time she identifies as, as a female, but she will let everybody know on certain days, I, actually, I'm a he, and I'll let you know when that changes. That's like kind of like the thing. Um, so that's really, that's really good, in my opinion, that Rick Riordan decides, okay, I, I have this kind of one dynamic. Now let me add another you know, different person. Why does everyone have to be like, why does every character have to be the typical like, okay, heterosexual, guy falls in love with woman, um, you know, able-bodied, everything, you know, like you don't get enough of this, this diversity, this inclusiveness. And, and that's why I really enjoyed. And Alex Fierro, the character is on his, on his slash her own, very, very strong, very strong-willed, um, feisty at times, uh, can hold his own, her, his or her, it's hard to really say, can hold her own when, um, uh, when it comes to a fight. Uh, and then in this book, there's a spark of, uh, an attraction that Magnus feels d towards Alex Fierro. Again, not going on the typical, oh, he has to fall in love with a female, strictly female, character biologically female character no he he well, i'm not saying falls in love but he expresses some kind of attraction to alex fierro which is great very forward thinking honestly again the strength of this this book like the first book is the dynamic of the characters in the group and also uh rick riordan starts including more more characters from the like his undead companions from Valhalla. Uh, he starts to include them more and give them a little more depth as well. And I like the pacing. Like this, uh, all three of the books of this trilogy have a similar pacing where it's like 
we need to do x so let's do that so they, they end up doing x and then x leads to y and then y leads to z and then or z if you're american and so on and so forth so it, it brings together this climax and he does a good job of creating reasons for the entire group's not always together for some reasons or others they're always having to split up and it works well because you get dy the dynamic of magnus with different groups of characters he gets one-on-ones with different characters instead of always being in this big group which is great again this book is in the first person of magnus's perspective he has a very sarcastic and witty way of narrating and i really enjoyed it uh it's a bit for, it's for younger ish audiences but uh again it's it's a disney essentially a disney production so check it out that's magnus chase book two Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Um, I'll probably be re reviewing the third installment of this book. And that's all I have to say now. Please subscribe to my channel if you like it. Uh, please like the video if you like the video. And please comment if you have anything to say. Take care.